Most people don't even really know his name. You know, everyone knows him as Dr. Goss. Everyone. You know, his patients call him Dr. Goss. The nurses call him Dr. Goss. Um, no one calls him Robert. <laughs> and no one calls him Dr. Gustafsson. So that sets him apart and different from everyone, all the other faculty. It's his, it's his compassion and it's kindness and that quiet confidence that allows parents to feel comfortable that he's the person taking care of their children. When he came in and talked to us and told us you know, what was going to happen, he kind of made me feel a little bit better that it was kind of like a common procedure, even though it, for us it wasn't common, but it was common to him that he's done it you know, so many times before, so that made me feel a little bit better that we had the best surgeon in the state you know, doing the surgery. He's the only Pete's heart surgeon in the state. So if he wasn't here, then we would have to ship all of our kids out of state. Being from West Virginia, it was very important to him to bring his skill back to a state that did not offer this service. If you think about what he's actually doing, he's operating on the most, one of the most vital organs in our bodies. And that kind of expertise that he has, he's the only one in the state that actually has that expertise to help take care of those sick children. He could go anywhere he wants to. You know, he, I know, has been highly recruited. Um, he's nationally, internationally known for the care that he provides. Um, but he's right here. I always tell everyone, um, WV Children's Hospital is the best kept secret in West Virginia. I decided to come back and rebuild the pediatric program. Dr. Warden had gone into retirement. But the hospital said, you, you pick 10 nurses and we'll give you two beds and you start doing this and see if it works. And, it, and it's worked beautifully. His mission is about patient care and excellence in patient care and striving to meet, meet the needs not only of the patient but the patient's families. You know, his whole mind and his team is centered around that child and um, the family knows that that child is going to get the care that he or she needs. I think the most impacting moment of, of our day in the operating room is taking that child from that parent. We might be having a difficult day on our end, but knowing the anguish of that family giving their child, handing their child over to our services is a remarkable and very humbling moment um, to realize the impact of what we have to provide and the safety that we have to provide for that child, knowing on certain days that child may or may not survive. You have to do good surgery, but you have to have a tremendous team to be able to pull it off. And uh, for that, I have been remarkably lucky. He keeps the team focused. He has taught us that every day is the moment for that patient. When he operates, there is no music blaring. There is no interruption tolerated. It, you can hear a pin drop when he's doing his repairs. We start the day before the operation with the family in the clinic and we very carefully define to the family what to expect and basically des design the operation for that child the day before. And then the next day we conduct the operation, hopefully the way we planned it. <laughs> that's something else that's really different about Dr. Goss is that you know when he's getting prepared to go to the OR because you can see him walking down the, up and down the hallway or kind of pacing as I call it, right in front of the patient's room. and Typically, he'll have his hand on his chin and um, sometimes eyes closed and really thinking. And you can almost see him and his mind going through the operation and exactly what he's going to do. And I'll do this if it's this and that if it's that. And so even when he comes home at night for that given day, his day doesn't end until he is assured he's reviewed the chart again. Um, you know, electronically, he looks at the patient, says he, even after he comes home, and then he'll start again tomorrow on the next patient. That's a pretty remarkable uh, focus that he has not swayed from in his 26 years of practice here. The other thing that, um, when I think of Dr. Goss, that makes him so special, we're a hospital within a hospital. We, as most institutions do, vie for resources, and Dr. Goss helps our cause. He keeps WVU Children's Hospital at the top of everyone's mind. Dr. Gus is a highly respected professional, and so he's able to carry the WVU Children's Hospital needs to those who are able to provide us with the resources. It's probably fair to say that we could not do what we do right now without CMN. 
it is uh, in some ways a lifeline to us staying in the same ballpark as bigger children's hospitals. There's probably no greater joy you can get than helping somebody who is sick, and particularly helping a young set of parents who just recently found out that their normal looking baby has a serious problem. They are devastated. They can't believe that somehow it can be fixed. He's a hero. He, again, along with God, is giving back life to these families and children who wouldn't have another choice. Not only is it about longevity, but it's quality of life. So two fun times of the year is Christmas and late April, when you get Christmas cards that have pictures of kids you operated on 20 years ago. And in late April, you get the graduation announcement when the child is graduating from college or graduating from high school. And all of a sudden you remember that name and you remember the fact that this child had this particular defect. And there's a lot of satisfaction. I mean, there's an enormous amount of satisfaction from being able to fix that child, give the child back to the parents, and realize that what you have done today when somebody who's three months old will allow them to live 75 years.